Live on the Joy News channel, also on Joy Prime, and also my joyonline.com interactive app. This is Joy News Prime. This evening, expect doom so because for the next 14 days, Ghana Gas is undertaking some maintenance work which will lead to power outages. We have the load shedding timetable. Meanwhile, ECG staff teamed up with prepaid vendors to steal more than 2 million CDs worth of prepaid credits. Also, High Court orders minority leader out of force into open defense on allegation that he played a key role in procurement of defective ambulances, resulting in a loss of more than 2 million euros. And with barely 24 hours for Parliament to go on Easter vacation, the House has still not yet approved three key revenue measures, which government has said is crucial to getting an IMF bail. Thanks for your company once again. Well, is it Doomso or Doom CSA? Well, the next 14 days, expect some interruption in your power supply. We're told by the Electricity Company of Ghana that a load shedding program will be released by close of day today or tomorrow. Uh, this follows a maintenance work that has been undertaken by the Ghana Gas at the Atuabo Processing Station. Well, we'll be hearing details from the Electricity Company of Ghana shortly on that particular program. But first, let's hear from the Director of Communications of Ghana Gas, the engineers thought it wise that we need to do some major maintenance routine and hence the, the, the shutdown. And one of the key, key ingredients that has contributed to the reduction of doom saw and all those recklessness going on is because of the fact that we have a good maintenance culture and that has helped us in terms of maintaining the gas uh, processing plant. They're looking at the whole gas processing plant from where we extract the raw gas from to where we transfer the gas for power generation, LPG, condensate, and the rest. So the whole gas processing plant is like a machine. It's like a car going to the mechanic for servicing. I think it's starting from April. We have what we call a tie-in Ghana gas processing plant is supplying almost about 110 mm scarf. Sankofa is also supplying. So the combination is giving us about 350 million scarves. So if Ghana gas stops, the rest of the other is shut down. The rest of the other gas gas and pushing it to Abuazi processing plant. Abuazi for, for thermal generation. So obviously we're going to be having gas. And then WAPCO has also assured us that they will also be pushing gas to the eastern enclaves as well. So a combination of that with a support, a little bit of support of heavy fuel to also power some of our thermal plants. I think that is going to be, we're good to go. Well, earlier, the Energy Ministry directed the Electricity Company of Ghana to come out with a load shedding timetable following that announcement by the Ghana Gas Company. Well, that is about to happen. But let's hear from the Communications Director of the Electricity Company of Ghana, William Watin, interacting with my colleague, Blessed Suga, on the pulse. It's across all our operational areas. So all the regions where ECG operates, the southern zone of Ghana. So we are talking about Ashanti region. We have Western region, or the two Western, Western region, Western North. We have water with tea, Central, then Great Accra, including Tema. So we have Accra and Tema. Of course, Kofu, we are talking about the southern zone of Ghana. So four groups in each region. So if you take today, group A is going off B. Then all the group A's in all the regions will go off. Do you understand? Right. So, so, so it's even yeah. taking so, effect uh, from, from so, now. Mm. So the grouping is A, B, C, D. Right. Ash Akra, A, B, C, D, Tema. A, B, C, D, Ashanti region. A, B, C, D, Central. The grouping is said that we are saying that you'll be off for five hours and you'll be on for three days. That, that's going to be the general rule. That's how it will be looking like for the next 14 days. So get ready for it. The load shedding timetable as and when we get it, it will be live on myjoyonline.com. Also, we'll bring you details of it right here on the Joy News channel. We'll stay a while longer on the power generation company. That's ECG. And uh, we're to, they're taking some criminal action against some hotels that have illegally connected to the power grid. They're still on with their revenue collection and disconnection exercise. A number of institutions and facilities have been disconnected from the grid. We're told about 
Hillbury Hotel in the eastern region. That's in Ibri, and they have um, illegally connected to power. There are some concerns on that. Let's hear from the external communications officer, Leila Abubakar, providing further details on what they've done so far. It's, it's almost, uh, it's jaw-dropping. It's abysmal, too blatant. And I think that um, there has to be a national call to this. I mean, yes, ECG has its own shortcomings here and there, which we are trying to solve, most of it engineering problems. But it looks like a large number of people intentionally steal power. And it's not any... Thankfully, Leila Abubakar joins us via Zoom here on Joy News Prime. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Let's um, get updates on what you've been up to. I know about Hillbury. We've been seeing disturbing videos there, and you've been talking earlier to us about the measures that have been put in place. But bring us up to speed on what you've been doing so far in terms of the revenue generation and disconnection exercise for today. Ah, there you go. Great. Hi, MFR. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear now. Thank you. Great. Um... Just before I speak about our revenue mobilization exercise, just let me just uh, make one correction. Your previous story, which also still lies within uh, ECG, mm -hmm. it's, it's no longer 14 days. Okay. The load has been shed for seven days already. And so we just have about seven days more to go. It ends on the 7th of April. And so people shouldn't expect to be off um, 14 days. It's no longer two weeks. And so, um, if you so we've experienced the first seven days already. So it's still two yeah, weeks, but, but the seven days is really gone. Pain. Okay. Yeah, it was painless because a lot of people didn't realize it. We just think it's right to inform Ghanaians that this is what is happening so that it would not come up as if we weren't being honest with our customers. Um, we thought that Ghana Gas would finish the the, the maintenance that they were doing much earlier. And so we're mm -hmm. just waiting to see how far we could push them to work harder. But it seems the, the, the load of work to do is quite chunky. And so they're requesting an additional seven days, which we are going to continue with. And so okay. it's not going to be as horrible. Okay, so we're expecting a, a timetable, even though we've experienced the first um, yeah, seven the days already. Will be public, yeah, it will be published um, online tonight and uh, in the traditional media tomorrow. I have a hard copy here, but it's so much that I cannot actually speak on it. If but you could just life. let me in on my area, which is um, the Accra <laughs> West area, what is it looking like? At least we know that on Monday we went off for five days, uh, five hours, and now we are told yeah. that it's going to happen. So maybe just let us in on that area. What does it look like? Yeah. I know it's ABC. So I it will be very hard for you to see. Okay. See how, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> this is the font size. These okay. are all areas of Accra. And I cannot possibly begin to look at I get it. all the names in there. It's so much. And so I think the best thing we'll do is just put it up so that people can scan through our website and get the information. We'll also publish it in the graphics. Once we get it, we'll definitely disseminate that as well. Thank you. But let's talk Thank about um, that revenue generation. So far, though, Mine. before we yeah. get into the exercise itself, so far, I know it's a revenue um, generation and collection, you know, uh, drive. Do we know how much we've made so far in terms of collect collection? I may know, but I, I'm not allowed to speak on that. Okay. I think I read advance earlier on that. I'll leave that to our managing director to announce when he gets back into the country. I think it's- Is it, is it anything close? Is it anything close to what you set out to collect? I cannot say, but okay. it's a lot of money. It's really impressive. I'm sure you'd be impressed when you hear the numbers. And then we can go on further to talk about other things that ECG can do to maintain the momentum. Okay. But it's really, it's looking good, yeah. But in your rounds, what's the most shocking that you've seen so far ahead? Ah, I could go on for days about that, but I think the one that affects me the most is just how much power is being stolen. You know, we have the facilities and the networks that are going around. We invest so much in it. We invest in metering, even though we have issues with that. Our guys are on the ground 24 hours, ready to fix problems. But it looks like we have a problem in this country where people just don't want to pay for the services that we have provided. Mm -hmm. And so anything that they can do to cut down on that particular cost that they have incurred from ECG, they will do as far as stealing, uh, which is a criminal offense. We've been lenient for so long. I think that it's time that we look at these issues separate from all the other things that we go through and start prosecuting people seriously. 
Um, yesterday, I had reports that the team that was in Legon took three people to the Legon police station where they will be processed for court later. It's going to be a thing that um, Ghana should expect to see more because the moment we catch you and we're able to prove that you have done this intentionally, you would have to face the music. Mm. And uh, there were some institutions, we've been talking about the Hillbury Hotel. What's really the update on it, that master disconnection uh, that you've been um, embarking on? What's the latest on that? Well, Hillbury is just one of the many hotels that we have found out to have okay. bypassed that them. Um, for them, theirs was more shocking because of the intentionality behind it. Because for someone to be able to dig ground, um, wire through and you know, connect directly to source, it means they were really looking at stealing power. Whereas some people give the excuse that, oh, I didn't know the electrician that wire didn't tell me. And, I mean, there are a plethora of reasons people give usually when we catch them. But this one was very, very intentional. Um, when the engineers put the equipment around our meters, they realized there was no current flowing through it. Means they had just bypassed and had, you know, created their own service line that they were just feeding through. For how long they've been doing this, only God knows. So we are trying so much to rectify the situation with them. We have um, informed the region and they are taking it upon. I think our legal directorate will look into it and prosecute. Um, also yesterday, if you'd allow me, we mm -hmm. went into a community um, near Dansuman mm -hmm. where there is even more stealing and they are even more bold. I think it's the same for Ada as well, where when ECG finds out that these people are stealing and they disconnect, they go back to reconnect sometimes in less than 24 hours. Mm. It is something what they are doing. It's blatant, it's criminal. And I think that we should really tackle this as a separate case. Mm. It's just that people have well, this area, we are told, is town council line. I don't know if I'm correct. But uh, let's talk about the safety of your officers in terms of this whole exercise, because we're told that in some instances they were threatened, others were locked up amongst others. Um, how are we ensuring their safety? For many of them, our customers are very understanding, especially when they, they know that they haven't paid their bills. And so they are open to uh, friendly conversations and discourses when we get there. Okay. And what is that we have to do, we do and we get out. For some of them, obviously, we didn't expect 100% of our customers will be so nice and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is that sometimes when we know the problem areas, we go in with security. Like yesterday, when we we're going to Pambrose, we went with um, policemen who were guiding us. Um, with places that we weren't expecting there to be some hesitation in allowing us to do our work, we usually have the National Security and Ghana Police on speed dial. Okay. And we just called it. And we also informed the nearest police station to that area that we are coming in. So please be on standby when we call, come and help us. And that was what happened at the Ghana police, um, at the Ghana post when our men were held hostage. Okay. Leila, we'll leave it here for now. Thank you so much uh, for your time here on the Joy News Channel. Well, Leila Bubakar is the External Communications Director of the Electricity Company of Ghana. And as we speak, we'll still stay uh, with the Electricity Company of Ghana because we know that today um, some staff um, who were allegedly, who are supposed to have um, siphoned some 2 million CDs, uh, they teamed up with prepaid vendors to steal more than 2 million CDs from the company. We're told the gang numbering 10 have been slapped with charges, including money laundering and stealing. Uh, Legal Affairs correspondent Joseph Akable joins me via Zoom with all the details from happenings in court today. Joseph, uh, break it down for us, what actually transpired. So the employees, three of them, uh, there's one, Ali Nancy Shaibu, he's a computer programmer at the ICT department at the head office here in Accra. There is also Grace Gardner, a chief supervising cashier officer at the ECG district office at Kaswa and Anthony D.K. Kwe, a technician at the ECG district office. The other accused persons, Ibrahim Baba Ademu, a technician at Ghana Electro Beta Company, Muntari Ademu, and Gariba Awudu Mesbao, Kusia Pia Donko, Eric Yauche, and Augustina Lanian, who are private vendors who sold uh, ECG prepaid power credits. And so we are told that the whole plot started with the ICT officer here in Accra, who was dispatched to go to the Volta region to resolve a prepaid connectivity challenge. It was while resolving this that he agreed with uh, the individual who had the challenge that he was resolving for, that what we'll be doing is that I will transfer credit to you for sale. 
And so once he transfers the credit, he deletes the transfer from the system. And so assuming I've advanced 10,000 CDs to UMFR as a prepaid vendor, I delete it. And so the system doesn't show that you've been given 10,000 CDs. Then once you sell the 10,000 CDs, we split the money two ways. And so that commenced there. And he now teamed up with other vendors in different parts of the country to undertake this particular activity, leading to uh, the theft of what ECG estimates to be 2.1 million CDs uh, pre in prepaid credits. Okay, Joseph, from your understanding then, let's talk about this software manipulation scheme uh, that's going on at ECG. And so we are told that it's not a situation that the, the software has been permanently uh, disabled or tampered with. It, it simply has to do with the fact that each time they went in to do the transaction, then they cleared their or back their, they cleared their footprints in there just to make sure that the transaction is not seen. And so that afforded them the opportunity to be able to sell credits and make money on the blind side of the public. And so what ended up coming into the ACG's coffers was very minimal. And the head office, which has the mandates at various levels, so if you go to the district, the district office to be monitoring the vending points within, could not even see that such transactions were taking place. Mm. And we understand some monies have been refunded? More than 200,000 cities, uh, according to the prosecutors, once these 10 individuals were arrested in the course of investigations, they admitted to their crime and refunded some, a little over 200,000 cities. Uh, the other point is that the investigators have been able to identify about three vehicles, as well as two houses belonging to some of the accused persons, which the prosecutors believe that they acquired them using the proceeds of this particular a crime and so it is this, for this reason that's why the charge of money laundering has been leveled against some of them but interestingly when the charges were read against them in court all 10 accused persons pleaded not guilty and so that is it so the case will have to go at the full hall and is back in court on april 27. we'll stay in court but joseph just before i let you go on the lighter note please don't be giving examples about transferring money to me okay <laughs> i'll take you up on that thank you very much joseph we'll stay a while longer in the court because Accra high court has ruled that minority leader dr case a forcing has a case to answer on the allegation that he played a key role in procurement of defective ambulances the transaction has resulted in the loss of more than two million euros to the state attorney general uh, called Five witnesses, including the health minister, Kweku Ajiman Menu, to testify against Dr. Forsen. Lawyers for Dr. Forsen urged the court to acquit and discharge him since a case had not been made requiring him to respond. Legal Affairs, Joseph Akable, once more. Dr. Forsen is standing trial together with former chief director of the Ministry of Health, Seth Animana, and businessman Richard Jakpa. The state is said to have lost more than 2 million euros because of the procurement of defective ambulances. The minority leader and other accused persons have always maintained their innocence. The coincidence speaks volume about the motivation for these frivolous and baseless charges. In fact, I call it illegal charges. A cursory reading of the frivolous and pol uh, politically motivated charges shows that my only role in the entire transaction was to have signed a letter on behalf of the Minister of Finance. The Attorney General disagrees. Through five witnesses, he insisted that the three accused persons have a case to answer. The case against the minority leader borders on two letters he authored. The main one had asked the Bank of Ghana to establish letters of credit for the ambulance supplier. The AG contends this was contrary to the terms of the contract as payments should have been made only after pre-shipment inspection. Lawyers for Dr. Forsen, however, argue that issuance of letters of credit does not amount to payment. They also insist he wrote these letters in his capacity as deputy minister for the finance minister tasked and authorized by the finance minister, Seth Tekwe. The court presided over by Justice Sifia Saribotri in its ruling noted that every party in the case admits in one way or the other that the ambulances imported into the country were defective. On the question of whether Dr. Forsen was authorized to write the said letter, Justice Saribotri said lawyers for Dr. Forsen seem to have misapprehended the law. The court said once the AG stated that Dr. Forsen did not have such authority and Dr. Forsen replied that he had seen, the responsibility was on him to show that he had the said authority. Evidence before the court, he noted, shows that Seth Tekwe even told prosecutors he did not have much information when he gave his statement. All three accused persons have been ordered to open their defense. The case is back in court on April 13.
I stay on legal related matters and it is uh, any non-military personnel selling, buying or possessing military accoutrement could land one in jail for a year or pay a fine of 3,000 cities or both if caught. Head of A Partners at Law, Samson Ladi Anyanene, explains that the law to prevent people from abusing military materials was passed in 1967 and is still very much active. His destination comes after eight members of the Ashanti Regional Branch of the NDC were questioned by the police for allegedly wearing military camouflage at a campaign tour of the former president John Dramani Mahama where the party is defending its members insisting they did, no, they did not wear military uniform. We can hear from the deputy general secretary of the party Mustafa Bande demanding that the Ghana Armed Forces provides proof uh, or evidence to prove the aid wrong. According to him it's a political agenda set to intimidate NDC members. The invitation of our official in Ashanti region is political, and I'm saying that if the commander raises his eyes beyond political lines, he should see that what they were wearing was not a military uniform. It, it may be a material close to the look of a military uniform, but not a military uniform. The law is very clear on that. So they should stop intimidating people. If the state institutions, that is the police and the military, are now awake and willing to do the right thing, we are happy. We are more than willing to cooperate and to bring sanity. It is bad to see a noble institution like the police and the military uniform being used by journalists, being used by musicians, being used by invisible forces, being used by operatives of political parties. If that is what we'll do, then we should stop everybody and put a measure to it. We can now hear from lawyer Samson Ladi Anyanene. A law in Ghana passed as far back as 1967 and as far as I know that law has not been revoked it has not been repealed it is the restriction on the use of military uniform and accoutrements Act. it prohibits clear prohibition of anyone who is not a military officer or in the armed forces wearing their uniform you are only allowed to wear it may only be allowed to wear it if you are say an ex-serviceman or it is that the president has approved that you should wear it and often these will wear it for ceremonial purposes only so you are not supposed to wear you are not supposed to buy, you are not supposed to sell. If someone is selling, you are also not supposed to buy. If you do that, you are violating and breaching that law. And you could be punished for uh, with a fine of not exceeding, uh, I think, 250 penalty units. That's uh, 3,000 Ghana cities. Or you could also go to jail for one year or both. You will be fined and then you go to jail. Well, let's uh, get some perspective of a security analyst on this. Joining us is President and CEO of Institute of Security, Disaster and Emergency Studies, Dr. Ishmael Norman. Thank you so much for joining us here on Joy News Prime. Well, uh, this is a concern. We've been hearing from the NDC um, questioning why the military or the police or security agencies are accusing these men of wearing a military uniform. They say it's something close to it. Then the question remains, how then do we identify that this is a no-go area this is camouflage that we can just use or is it that we should all steer clear of camouflage you'd have to unmute sir we'll try and establish connection again uh, to dr ishmael norman and um, you get some clarity on this particular situation because the NDC feels that um, they've been these men are being just um, victimized on political grounds uh, but we've been hearing from the, the lawyers on what the law says about these camouflage but let's see if we can uh, reconnect to uh, Dr. Ishmael Norman on this what is um, what actually qualifies to be a military accoutrement what in, we see in the background for instance um, if I wear that 
Uh, does it mean that I'm wearing a military uniform? Uh, what can I do? Uh, to what extent um, can we go when it comes to that? Uh, but it appears that um, the connection to Dr. Ishmael Norman is not allowing for that conversation to happen. That's when, when we do get him, uh, we would speak to him on that. But let me take you to Parliament, because uh, um, this issue is still raging, and more sponsors of the promotion of proper human and sexual values uh, bill uh, con have confirmed alleged orchestration by the LGBTQ community to unseat them. I'll pause on that briefly and take you back uh, to Dr. Ishmael Norman. Thank you so much once again for your time. Hopefully I have a better connection. So I was asking, at what point do I then identify that this is a military accoutrement or not, or should I just stay away from anything camouflage? You have to unmute, sir. You can hear me? Great, I can hear you. Okay, all right. I think the order sometimes is totally wrong. The Ghana army does not have the copyright control over the military fatigue that people are wearing. The order is very, very clear. And uh, NLCD 177 says, no one should be allowed to use military uniform unless they are permitted. Now, unless they saw the attire to the precise specification of the Ghana Army. The print itself is not owned by the Ghana Army. I speak not on behalf of GAPSI, even though I work there. I speak on the authority of the rule of law. They, in order for you to have copyright control by any design, you should own it. Ghana Army doesn't own it. If I buy it from the open market and I wear it, I make it into a suit, and you arrest me, that would be wrong. If I saw it into some kind of make-believe military uniform, that's a little bit too much, and it will be right for them to stop them from using it, but they shouldn't arrest them. Because in order to show to the specification of the Ghana Armed Forces uniform, you must know what the specifications are, which they recently published. Mm. So, just because I'm wearing the print, you can't, you cannot just arrest me. For example, the Chinese, they have their own design. The Americans, they have their own copyrighted design. So if you use the Chinese military fatigue, you will be arrested if you use the American one. But if I buy a design from the... Oh dear. It appears we've just um, lost Dr. Ishmael Norman uh, once again, but at least he made, he made the point very clear uh, on that uh, particular uh, situation that we are faced with currently. He's a president and CEO of Institute of Security, Disaster and Emergency Studies, and back to issues about um, the proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill, and um, it, we, it's been laid today in parliament. However, uh, those proponents are saying that they are confirmed alleged orchestration by by the LGBTQ community to unseat them from parliament. We can hear from Roxanne Nelson Dapamakbo on that. Let me put this matter on record. You are aware that they are even influencing our, our, our politics these days, the gay community. How? Yes. Some judge hasn't told you. No. What, what is what happening? Happened? We are under attack. As in politics, as in your primary? So yeah, it's that they think that we are the strong advocates so we can be removed from parliament. When we are removed from parliament, the advocacy goes down. Oh, okay. But that's, that's an entry, of course. Yes. Well, well, but that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, influencing our elections. Yeah, but of course, you are advocating. So if you lose your primary, you're not going So, so, so uh, in your constituency, have you, have you, have people come to run against you with that? Why? They can sponsor from afar. You don't have Have to. you noticed that happening? Yes, we've noticed it. We've been alerted. So it is not something we are taking lightly. These people are on a vendetta. They are on an agenda to ensure that this bill doesn't succeed in parliament. Actually, I'm just not being paranoid on this one. We are not paranoid. They want you out of parliament. The people want us out of parliament. I'm sure if you... You don't have any evidence. I'm sure we, you are we just... have, No, we have evidence. Okay. We have evidence. But uh, we are just... We, we, we are speaking to the fact that these are people who are not, who are not sleeping. Is it Ghanaian-led or foreign-led? It is always Ghanaian-led with foreign influence. Well, the country director of Amnesty International, Genevieve Partington, says the bill in its current form is discriminatory and it will promote hate. It um, promotes hate crime. Let me give you an example. So if 
people are perceived to be lesbian or gay and let's let's just say me i'm in a hotel room with another lady and someone decides to call and suspect that i am a lesbian um you know it can it can promote hate crime because what if i am not and just as we catch thieves in ghana and we um, do instant justice and mob action this can also um, increase mob action towards this community so this is this is one thing i feel is not good i think the law is the bill is vague in terms of the you know what what do you define as advocacy or supporting what do you define as okay we are upset about this bill um, i think it's very vague on those terms that's Amnesty International there. But let me bring in uh, a whole West MP, Emmanuel Kwesi Bejra, uh, one of the proponents of this bill and the concerns that have been raised by uh, Roxanne Nelson, the Palmer Ball. Let's check on him if that's the same um, situation he's faced with. Thank you so much for joining us via Zoom. If you don't mute, uh, well, we've been hear hearing from your colleague, Roxanne Nelson, the Palmer Ball, mentioning that it appears that the LGBT community, they are sponsoring uh, some candidates against them um, to unseat them because their voice are the loudest when it comes to this uh, particular bill. Uh, has that been brought to your attention and what's your own situation? Hey, um, thank you very much and good evening to your cherished listener and viewers as well. Uh, yes, um, we had some, uh, we, and we read on the social media as well that some uh, group of people uh, are sponsoring people against us, especially the eight uh, uh, members of parliament who, uh, from, who are supporting this bill. We've heard it. Mm. But I'm sure that uh, you've been interacting with some of your colleagues on this. How real is it beyond just hearing it on social media amongst others? Well, um, yes, just as I mentioned, we've heard it, uh, we've read it, but uh, nobody has come out boldly to say that yes, indeed, uh, we are being sponsored by this group of people or community against you and uh, so for now it is a hearsay and also it is um something that we we we, we have had we haven't seen anybody in action we are waiting for any or anyone who uh, will be bold enough to say that yes indeed uh, we have been sponsored or we are being sponsored by the community to come and unseat you then we will take it from there well, is this of concern then to you, knowing that the primaries is just around the corner, May 13th? Is that of concern to any of you? Well, it's a concern to all of us uh, because, uh, but because if if you uh, look at the survey that was carried out by CDD as well as USAID, it shows clearly that Ghanaians do not want this uh, thing to happen. And therefore, I don't think anybody, not even my community or my constituency or any of the constituencies of the eight members of parliament or any constituency in Ghana will, uh, uh, will want this to fetter and continue in this country. And the, the earlier we allow this bill to pass, the better. Mm. And thankfully, it's been laid today. Any uh, significant changes? We know that um, it's been uh, the jail term, we are told, from five years to three, and issues about advocacy has been addressed. Any significant changes, and how hopeful are we that this bill actually will be passed? Um, today, I'm one of the happiest persons in Parliament because, uh, apart from it being laid the first time uh, on the 20th of August last year, uh, the report itself from the committee has also been laid today and thankfully uh, we are grateful to the speaker as well as to our colleagues uh, on the committee of constitution legal and parliamentary affairs it's been laid the report has been laid today that's the second reading. the second reading will take uh, place either tomorrow or as soon as we return from 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 um, from recess and uh, MFA, you mm -hmm. know that if a committee uh, agrees uh, uh, that they recommend for the House to approve, uh, subject to uh, their recommendation to the amendment, then uh, we are on our way out. It is not a majority report, it is a consensus report, and therefore uh, we are happy that uh, it will carry the day. And um, in fact, one of the things that we have discussed with the Speaker is that after the second reading, we will not take a voice vote. As many who wants uh, to support us should stand. 
And so there will be a division. If you don't support this bill, let the whole world know that you don't support this bill because it has created, you know, a hot tears in this country. So okay. most of us will be standing. And if you don't support it, then we'll see whether you support or you don't support it. And go back to your constituents you tell them that you want to promote uh, LGBTQI in this country. Now, looking at the bill itself, a uh, few amendments have been proposed. Uh, some came from the Attorney General. Actually, what Attorney General brought has been taken care of by the, the committee as well as we uh, uh, promoters of the bill. Uh, I can give you a typical example. Uh, the first one has to do with the title, the short title of the bill. Initially, the short title of the bill has to do with what we call proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family value. We've taken the word proper out. Okay. Uh, and then we've taken also the Ghanaian out. So it is not proper human, it's not promotion of human sexual right okay. and family value. And okay. so it's no longer promotion of proper human sexual rights, it's not promotion of human rights and family value bill. That is the first one. And okay. so it will also affect the long title. The okay. long title will take those things out. And then we'll look at the sentencing regime as well, which I, I heard you commented on it. And so we'll look at a few things. Uh, largely, the bill will not, um, it, 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 even though we have done some amendment collaboratively between us and the committee, it will not change uh, the, the content or it will not change what we really wanted to okay. do. Mr. Bejra, we are grateful uh, for your time. That's Emmanuel Kwesi Bejra, who West MP, joining us via Zoom. Let's take a quick comment uh, from the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mustafa Bande, on um, LGBTQ community allegations that uh, they are sponsoring some candidates against um, these eight MPs uh, who are proponents of this uh, particular bill. Mr. Bande, thank you so much for joining us via Zoom. So has these concerns uh, come to the party's attention and how are we hoping to address it? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I, I think that, um, let me state that uh, I do not have express instruction from my superiors to state a position of the party as far as this subject is concerned. But the only issue where I come in is when our members of parliament allege that there's a seeming sponsorship from the LGBTQ communities against them in their communities and in their various constituencies. Um, in our guidelines, we do not have any provision that seek to bar the sex of one person or the other to be able to qualify to contest. Number two, we have not also defined sources of funding as far as parliamentary campaigns are concerned. Much as we have our individual opinions about this subject matter, it is rightfully an issue in Parliament and the unanimity of Ghanaians in terms of whether or not they support or against this discussion is very sacred because it is happening in the House of Parliament. Okay. And so it should remain there. But where it is being imported into constituencies and stuff like that, I believe that if that comes to our attention, uh, the question will be whether or not the opponents are also gay members or they are not gay members. So this discussion is not really a subject matter of consideration. But I believe that it would not be fair if they migrate the issues happening in parliament, being petitioned by religious leaders and, and government institutions into our internal politics. Because the party having got any clause, any provision that uh, sort of discriminate or sort of deal with this issue as a subject. As it stands, uh, no official complaint have come to us. Okay. The party has issued any formal or official position as far as these matters are concerned. Mm. But I also believe that if uh, a gay or LGBTQ community pursue MPs to their constituencies because they are pursuing a business of parliament, I believe that is not fair. Okay. And Mr. Gwande, we'll, we'll leave it here. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much. But on a lighter note, are you teaching? I can see pineapple banana on the screen behind you. We are planning to unseat Nanado and his government. Okay. That's how we... we, 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 we.
Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, Mustafa Bande, Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. We're taking a quick break here on Joy News Prime. There's more uh, when you log on to myjoyonline.com. We are right back after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back and let's zoom straight into showbiz and Becky uh, with a good hair. Mm. Uh, she's here in the studio. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> well, MFA, uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a yeah. first day. Tomorrow's Friday. We're all excited. Mm -hmm. um, Irene Logan, a uh, beautiful voice. Uh, recently, she uh, sung uh, the national anthem for America uh, just, you know, recently in, uh, inside Cape Coast. Okay. And, I caught up with her also recently, and she's been talking about what she's up to. And also, I did mention about her more song. Testimony, the Holy Spirit gifted that song to me. And, uh, you know, it's always a blessing when I see people who have listened and have been blessed by it. So, yeah, thank you. What are you up to? I'm working very hard. I have a fashion brand called Tribasa, but also I've been doing ministry work. Unfortunately, I know I haven't been in the media for a long time. It's intentional, you know, until I have something I is to talk about, which this year is, is coming up. So I'm excited. I love my life. I love the learning process I'm on, and I'm excited and grateful. I'm also excited and grateful that we had that conversation. Let's talk about Davido. In fact, you know that finally he's confirmed that he's married. Oh, to Chioma. To Chioma. Yeah. We're very excited uh, for Davido. Congratulations. Congratulations to him. Uh, Kwame Eugene is out with a new video, cryptocurrency uh, featuring Rotimi. Oh, Have you seen the video? No. Well, uh, he was on Joy Prime speaking about, you know, the video, how... Uh, they got the, how he got the feature and also mm. why you should go stream this particular video. I, I made the video myself and my friends in my background in the studio vibing to cryptocurrency and I posted it because it's been a while I've had a song out there because I was just, just preparing, working on some stuff and and that's because why you're on a new level, man, brother, boy, man, I don't know yeah. when they get them, got a wonder little boys got a, me no one of them, I may not put this on my mama, got my money and my car and they get it, it wasn't there. Oh, because after his verse, he did something really crazy. I had to go and change myself. So that pushed you. Yes. Mecca, what do you make of the video? You. Yes. It's a Wakanda vibe. Like I really like it. It's, it's really good. Aww. Really good. That's so nice. Shall we are taking it to the next level. Next mm -hmm. level. Deed. New level now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so have you heard of cues and lyrics? It's uh, yeah. something that is coming on Joy Prime. Uh, the audition will be tomorrow. Kwame Eugene has an advice for all of you who are willing or are hoping to join cues and lyrics first thing mm -hmm. prepare the song you're going to sing mm -hmm. and don't have one option have like three options sure the songs you can sing best the song that the key works for you mm -hmm. don't go and sing a song that has too much of a high pitch that you get someone you get stuck so choose your three best songs mm -hmm. second God has a massive confidence. Yeah. Whoever you're going to meet tomorrow is a normal human being. Mm -hmm. Don't think they're celebrities or you've been seeing them on TV, so they're so special on you. Uh, you get there and you can't sing anymore. Yeah. That's that's what happened to a lot of people. They'll go back home and they are singing really well. They say, ah, we have done this there. Mm -hmm. So that's second confidence. Confidence, uh -huh. And three, pray before you go. That's right. As like a, it. That's it. <laughs> I mean, Eugene, mm -hmm. right there. So uh, that will end And my pizza for... is hosting. Hosting. Cues and yeah, lyrics cues and tomorrow. lyrics. So if you know how to sing, do you know how to sing? Just, you know. Um, I know you have a diner song that I can help you with. Um, oh, we still have time. Don't worry. <laughs> we don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't have time. Uh, but we'll see. We'll be there uh, yeah, for the audition. Let's go and audition together as a, as a girl group, right? <laughs> as okay. a girl group. <laughs> On that smiling note, make read sure the, go and read it. the midday news. Then I can uh, you know, also do something uh, else. <laughs> do brush it. your teeth twice a day, every day. We do it tonight Sudent. with Pep Student, Cavity Fighter, Charcoal. 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 We have which one else? Uh, all the range. Make yeah. sure we you love brush your teeth uh, with Pep Student because with Pep Student, every smile matters.
And that's how we wrap up um, Joy News Prime. Uh, also on Joy News, uh, Joy News and then Joy Prime Channel Joy Prime and MyJoyOnline.com and all our social media platforms. Up next is Beverly Prime Brown. Business, Beverly Brown. Please help.